as you speak to them. Time is now six o'clock. At this time, we will call this meeting to order, being the April meeting 2021 of the Dawson County Planning Commission. We'll begin with invocation from Tim Bennett, if you would please, Tim. Let's bow our heads. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for your mercy and your grace and your love toward us. We just pray, Lord, in this meeting that everything that we say and do, God, would both uh, bring glory and honor to you and to Dawson County and to the citizens of Dawson County. And we just pray everything that we say and do will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I ask you to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, maybe seated. This time we'll have our roll call. Miss Harmony, when you're ready. The record will show that there are four of us present. We currently do not have our new member here tonight, Steve Sandy. Uh, anxiously wait to see him next time. Under announcements, there will be a planning commission meeting May the 18th, 2021, same location, same time. Uh, gentlemen, I assume you've had opportunity to look over the minutes. Is there any amendments that need to be made? If not, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Moving a second to approve. All in favor? Motion is carried 4-0. The agenda that's presented before you tonight from staff, I assume you've had opportunity to look over it. If there's any changes that need to be made, if not, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Move in a second. All in favor? Motion is carried 4-0. If you're here tonight to speak either in favor or in opposition, of any application and you have made contributions of more than $250 to any local official campaign, there's a form that will need to be filled out prior to you speaking tonight and Harmony has that up here at the desk if you need to uh, fill that out. Begin with old business, uh, presentation of ZA21-07. Jim King is requesting rezone 14.3 acres of tax mount parcel 114 033 005 from RA to CHB for the purpose of building retail office warehouse space. Is someone here to speak for Mr. King? If you would please come forward, write your name and address on the piece of paper there on the podium. And then if you would begin by stating your name, just for the record. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. <clears throat> I'm here tonight to try to see if I can uh, beat the world's record for a number of public hearings for a case. But um, this is the same two cases that we uh, that I brought before you last month. And we found something uh, different on the CHB case, um, the ZA2107. There was a life estate parcel that was out, and we've hence, uh, I guess, since that, we've come up with proof that the life estate has transferred to the owner. And so we've gone back and included that in our application, as well as a parcel that um, is between uh, the application we submitted before and Walmart's piece of backs right up behind Walmart. So we've added both of those to our CHB application. And so I would respectfully ask that you. Um, table these both of these cases until next month so that we can bring the we, we submitted a new application for the chb and we need to bring it forward so that these two run concurrent with each other so if there's any questions i'll be happy to answer any questions of the applicant thank you sir <clears throat> you have a request to table both ZA 21-07 and 21-08 uh, until our next meeting due to some new information and new land being brought into this. Is there any discussion? See no discussion, is there a motion? Motion to approve table. Second. 
with a motion and a second to table uh, ZA 2107 and 2108 until our next meeting. All in favor? Motion is carried 4-0. Thank you, sir. Under new business, application for variance, presentation of VR 21-04. Thomas and Leanne Harder is requesting to vary from the Dawson County Subdivision Regulations, Article 5, Section 50421. No more than five lots will be created from the present tract within a five year period. Tax month parcel 101 011 010 136 East. Is someone here to speak for Thomas and or Leanne Harder? If you would please come forward, uh, write your name and address on the piece of paper there on the podium. Did we put our address? Sorry. Okay. Are you Thomas and Leanne Harder? Yes. yes. I'm Leanne. Thank you. The remainder of the board, yes. Tom and Leanne. Um, if you would give us a brief description as to the reason for your variance. We bought um, a total of 53 acres off of 136. Um, our, our goal was to, uh, you know, have our children to live there. I have two boys. Um, eventually, I guess, you know, we call it a little homestead. But um, so that's not anytime soon. But then we have that. Uh, 13 acres of land that we would like our our family. We're not blood, but been with us for over 20 years. Um, I don't want to say care care well caregiver. You know they'll be there when we get older. You know uh, and like I said, been with us for many many years. So we looked at that that piece of land, that 13 acres. And um, I know we have to give, or we, it has to be five acre lots. So we want to do that, but still maintain the other, the other 13 acres, yes. Okay. Your children, how old are they? Uh, 33 and 30, yeah. 34. 34. Okay. And uh, where are they located at now? I know, I know um, you've mentioned have, them coming up. Both of them are in Dawsonville, okay. have, been, have been raised here. Okay. Um, well, not, we moved here when they were in middle school. So maybe not raised. <clears throat> you're looking to divide this out for a lifelong friend that you're considering family, but you're needing to do so in less than the five year period of time. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. Could, could I chip in please, here? Please, please, Mr. Chairman. You're doing uh, a pretty good job. You did. <laughs> you did. Uh, I, I mean, I, I like full disclosure here. Just, just what you're asking. One of our sons has no interest in it. Okay. We hope he does at some point. The other one has an interest, but uh, hasn't sold us. The, the the problem with the problem with wood right now, you guys know, nobody can afford to build a house, or at least our son can't. So. We don't know when that's going to happen, uh, and and we know, and and we had great conversations with these two nice people over here. Uh, we know that, like Leanne said, we have to do the five acres, and we're and I know you guys know zoning a lot better than we do, but we're we're asking to do something about two and a half years early. We have two two years and probably eight or nine months before the five years is up. And, and we didn't even know about the five years. That's our fault. Uh, and this just came up and, and this, uh, this family, they got two sons, one in high school, one in middle school, and they have their own home. And they really, and they're, they're happy where they are, but they cover us like family when we're, if we leave and we have two rescue donkeys and two pigs and four chickens and little hobby farm. And four dogs. Yeah. So instead of them living in our house, we'd like to, uh, 
and they would too. They'd like to just stay in their own house and, and look after our farm. So that's that's the bottom line. Okay. Any questions for the applicants? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of the application? Seeing none, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the application? Seeing none, at this time, I'll close the board for discussion. Do we need discussion on the variance to allow this division in less than the five year period? Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Move and a second to approve. I'm going to allow y'all to vote for that blocking anything. So, all in favor? Motion is carried. Right. You have your variance. Pre presentation of VR 21-05, Kurt Trump is requesting to vary from the Dawson County Land Use Resolution, Article 3, Section 309C3, front setback reduction from 40 feet to 20 feet to bring a non-conforming structure into compliance, tax amount parcel L17-189, Oak Grove Road. Is someone here to speak for Mr. Kurt Trump? You would please come forward, write your name and address on the piece of paper there. Would please state your name. Kurt Trump. And if you would give us a reason for your variance application. Uh, basically the existing slab that was up there where the porch was, it was 22 inches from the edge of the house. When I poured the new slab and required a variance because it brings the edge of that slab about 11 inches closer to the road, maybe. And uh, I want to Build that in where it was a porch. I want to enclose it in so it'd be part of the house. Is there also a water issue that goes along with this? I fixed all that. Okay. I put a probably about 65 feet total concrete steel reinforced wall. I run it slap through the house all the way to the bank next to the road there. So you've got the water issue taken care of. Already. Yeah, I ain't got no water in that basement. Very good. Any questions to the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone here to speak in favor of the application? If you would, please come forward. Write your name and address on the piece of paper there on the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Catherine Wright. I live at 329 Oak Grove Road. I fully support what Mr. Trump's trying to do. I think it will improve the looks of his property and I think it'll be an access to the road. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak in a favor of the application? If you would also please come forward, write your name and address on the piece of paper there on the podium. My name is Bill Mayer. I live at 251 Oak Grove Road, two driveways up from Mr. Trump's property. I've been watching what he's been doing the last few months, and I have been very, very pleased with it. I know that at the moment it's still an eyesore because of the construction trash, but it's going to be nice. And I hope uh, y'all will recommend approval. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Do anyone else is speaking in favor of the application? Seeing none, is there anyone speaking in opposition to the application? Seeing none, at this time we'll close the board for discussion. Gentlemen, any discussion on this, this variance? Seeing none, is there a motion? Motion to approve the variance. Second. Move and a second to approve. All in favor? Motion is carried 3-0. Application for rezone presentation of ZA 21-09. Tim Hamby is requesting to rezone tax amount parcel 106051, 106051015, 106051014 from RA and VCR to RSR for the purpose of combining and subdividing the parcels per RSR standards. Someone here to speak for Tim Hamby. If you would please come forward, write your name and address on the piece of paper there on the podium. Mr. 
would please state your name. Tim Hamby. You would give us a reason for your reason request. Um, just it's um, I'm wanting to combine. I've got there's eight right at nine acres total. Part of it's zoned VCR. Part of it's zoned zoned RA. I just wanted to get it all rezoned into one zoning. Uh, just basically, I've, I've got part of it sold. And um, I mean, I'm either going to build or sell the remaining lots. I don't want to subdivide on there. I think you guys probably have a plat that we I do. proposed plat. So, How long have you had this piece of property? Well, my dad bought it in 1985 or six. So since I was eight year old, nine year old. And it was BCR in 85? No, we developed a part of it into a subdivision. There's okay. two lots that we still own that are, that are, are part of the subdivision, and that's what's on BCR. That was the only zoning they had back then for a subdivision, from what I understand. Right. So I don't even think that's a zoning anymore. It's not a viable zoning anymore. <laughs> right. it was just a little odd to me to see it there, but nonetheless. Me and you both. Yeah. Right. Any questions? <laughs> Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you, guys. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of the application? See you none. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the application? See you none. This time we'll close the board for discussion. Do you have any discussion? Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Move and a second to approve. All in favor? Motion is carried 3 0 with one abstention. Uh, your rezone will go before the Board of Commissioners next month, May 20th. Uh, and you will go before the Board of Commissioners. Everyone else that has passed with a variance, your business is essentially over. You have passed with your variance, you have your variance. The rezone we're recommending board, we recommend to the Board of Commissioners for rezones, but variances are handled in-house. Under public hearings, presentation of Dawson County's alcohol ordinance update. Mr. Jameson. Thank you, Chairman. Planning Commissioners, uh, what you have in your packets is a update to our alcohol ordinance. And what we really did was we did five things when updating this ordinance. We reordered a lot of the, the different parts of this ordinance. Uh, the reason for the updates was really for to add the section about the agribusiness, which really in turns is our wedding venues, but we didn't want to specify wedding venues out in its entirety. So we called it agribusiness. Uh, and our brown bagging section, we wanted to update that to let to loosen those regulations up a little bit. Um, I want to talk about some decisions that the board needs to be, to make about this ordinance, and I also want to uh, talk about some significant procedural updates, and then I'll go through the details of the agribusiness. But for the purpose of the reordering of this document was not only to accommodate the newly created licenses, but also was for the convenience of staff to better communicate with our businesses and our citizens. We went through this document with several business with several businesses, compared it to several other jurisdictions as how best to manage this ordinance. Now, one thing to know about this ordinance is when it was originally created, we had a specific position in planning and development or the marshal's office at the time as an alcohol license administrator. So we had one person that was dedicated full time to collecting all these documents, putting them together, making sure that they, they, these things were we're done properly, and now that all that those duties are divided up over several administrative assistants, Harmony does a lot of these with our alcohol licenses that come before the board. So when we look at our procedurals, we want to try to make clean these things up to, because we don't have that full-time person to continue doing these. Um, but the main reason for this update was to accommodate agricultural businesses and allowing them to serve alcohol. And we gave them really two different options. One, we gave them the option to come in and get an actual alcohol license so that where they can purchase the alcohol wholesale and actually serve it by the drink to the to their customers which really is what it, it boils down to wedding venues and them being able to provide these wedding venues alcohol to the uh, participants at the uh, the weddings and the second is brown bagging which allows for someone renting the venue to bring their own alcohol and then really serve it back to their guests and that seems to be the avenue after speaking with almost every wedding venue that we have in, in Dawson County, that seems to be the avenue that all of them have been doing and they will continue to do throughout this process. But we wanted to make sure that we give them options going down the road as to 
if and if and when they want to continue selling their uh, their alcohol. But the two things moving forward, the two things that I wanted to mention to the board. First, the thing we added in, in, in is section 6-119, which allows for variances. Now, we have to understand that our alcohol ordinance really is one or two versions right out of Dawson County being a dry county. I mean, if you can, I don't know, uh, Chairman Hammy might be re might remember when this was a dry county uh, back, Certainly. you know, probably 20 years ago, maybe. Yes. Um, but like I said, we're one or two versions out of that. So we have a lot of businesses that want to come into the county, but a strict and literal interpretation of some of our ordinances have would restrict them from being able to, to, to sell alcohol um, and, and allowing them to have variances, um, but not allowing from specific sections, but not allowing to, them to vary from the intent of the code is what we're trying to do. Now, this isn't a variance portion in an alcohol ordinance isn't something that most jurisdictions do. They want to stay away from it because the state heavily restricts you know, uh, the, the selling of alcohol. And we wouldn't allow any variances to where, uh, you know, it would, we can't undermine the state, basically. Um, the other section really comes from what, what passed through the, uh, the state last year. They, they, they reduced or relaxed some of their curbside delivery and their straight delivery. So they, as of right now in the state of Georgia, a package store can deliver to someone's house unless otherwise restricted in a jurisdiction. So it's up to each individual jurisdiction to make that determination. It's also up to each specific jurisdiction to uh, allow curbside delivery. Now, as of right now, as it stands in our ordinance, we do not allow curbside delivery. So if you go to a package store, they can't come out and put in your trunk. We did relax the last year during a specific part of COVID, but um, so we can't, as of right now, it's, as it stands, you can't take it to someone's car at the curb, but we don't have any restrictions about actually delivering it to someone's house. So we're kind of backwards on that right now. We just wanna make sure we clear up that language. Um, as far as the brown bagging is concerned, um, in order to be considered brown bagging, it has to be on premise in which a county business license has been issued. So there has to be a business license on site that this brown bagging is occurring under. And uh, it has to occur at a location which is different where the alcohol beverage was purchased, obviously. And in the rest of the regulations basically say that it's the responsibility of the person that is renting the venue in order to provide all the alcohol and it's they're, they're, they can't serve the minors, they, they have to know those regulations. The only difference between beer and wine and liquor is if they're selling or they're serving actual uh, malt or liquor at these sites, they have to ha hire a, um, a, a, a bartender with the appropriate training and experience. So most bartenders have the state card that says that they are a state registered bartender. They have to have that on site if they are serving liquor. The Agribusiness sale of malt beverages and wine just basically allows them to sell it. I, I, I can go through it in more detail if you want, but basically it says that they have, they're restricted on the times they're allowed to do it. Um, they can, uh, let's see here, uh, it relieves them of the 50% requirement of selling food because most of our wedding venues, they bring, the, they cater their food from the outside. As our alcohol license stands right now, any alcohol license, 50% of your sales has to come from food because Dawson County doesn't generally, we don't want our, we don't want just strict bars, but agribusiness kind of circumnavigates that a little bit because it's just a different beast altogether. Uh, some of the things that we relaxed in our ordinance was our date and times in which things were submitted. Uh, as of right now, an alcohol license has to be renewed by November 31st and then it expires December 31st. Um, and then you have a grace period. Well, we find ourselves and our staff are getting bogged down, trying to chase down people, getting to renew. We much rather just turn them over to the marshal's office and say, hey, listen, you need to, you, you know, your, your alcohol license is expired. We need to, uh, we need to pursue different avenues. Um, there are a few other ins and outs that we kind of just cleaned up and I'll, I'll entertain any questions that you have about any any, any other parts of this ordinance, but I think uh, we spent, this is what, a year and a half, two years in the making. 
uh, that we, we we worked on this ordinance and it's, it's finally before the board and before y'all for a recommendation. So I'll entertain any questions. Uh, what type of businesses would not be able to come into Dawson County outside of a bar only based on the current regulations? What you said other businesses would want to come here, but that's so, our code, so. A lot of it has to do with like the 50% regulations. As we know, um, you know, a couple years ago, we had an issue with uh, um, Crave Barbecue. Um, they wanted to do a kind of a sample wall and they weren't trying to vary from the intent, but it, it strictly says that a, a server has to take the uh, dispense it from a dispense to the table. So their, their whole uh, thing was like, you could go up and get a sample um you know that would have been a variance that we would have that they could they could ask um another one would be uh you know we have we have other type of breweries uh in this area that uh they don't necessarily sell food and they don't want to sell food well what they do is they get a food truck or they get some other way to provide that 50 percent uh food regulation so technically they are kind of a restaurant but they they just don't want to deal with the mess of you know the the food application so that business like that business couldn't couldn't come into dawson county because even though they want to they don't want to circumnavigate the 50 percent rule they just have a different kind of business model to project that and we see a lot of i see a lot of different other other different people that have some some interesting ideas sometimes but um we, you know we want to be able to put that before the board the board of commissioners the board of commissioners would make all the decision on variances when it comes to alcohol uh, I didn't want to make sure that, you know, I didn't want to bring these to the, the, the planning commission, allow y'all to make variances. Well, let's let that at the, the board of commissioner level. So did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. The pages that you've given us, uh, 134, 135, 137, 146, are these the only, 147, are these the only pages that have changes to them? That is an excellent question. I believe we we did all the we we, we put the red line version in the uh, in, in the packet. Uh, they should have had uh, all the different changes. Most of the changes on most of the pages were really just cleaning up the different sections and different articles that we changed. But you have the you have the major changes right there in your. Uh, but there are other changes that we're not physically looking at tonight. Is that correct? Uh, they should have been in your packets that were emailed out to you. So there's nothing big on these pages that are missing. Right? No, like like she said, one of the other changes was you know we instead of doing uh, almost everyone does malt beverages and wine, so you can sell beer and wine. That's your typical uh, you know your uh, your gas station. And instead of doing two separate applications for each one of those, even though we charge them the same amount, we just made it one application. So you can, you can do both. It makes it easier on staff to, to process. Um, all the major changes you should have right in front of you. Any other questions? Thank you. Is this a public hearing for this? Yes. Is anyone to speak in favor of the changes for the new alcohol guidelines. If you would please come forward, state your name and address, also writing, just write your name and address and state your name, Mr. King. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, I actually didn't realize that they were uh, modifying the alcohol alcohol ordinance um, and the public hearing was tonight, but I was, uh, I was a commissioner when the original alcohol ordinance came in. And, um, but it's a, it's a very opportune time. My um, neighbor across the street, Blake Palmer, it's, uh, he's the founder of Old Dad's Wings. I don't know if you've had those or not, but he now is operating the restaurant at Chesity Golf Club. And he just asked me the other day um, what it would take to get the ordinance changed to allow for brunch, um, I guess, and something I didn't realize, but they can't serve a brunch because you can't serve alcohol before 12 o'clock or 1230 or whatever it is on Sunday. 
Um, but he said most of the counties like Lumpkin and other ones that have wineries and all the places that you have a nice brunch, the finer dining places, they can't do that in Dawson County because of that part of the ordinance. So uh, because of the fact you don't like to open up an ordinance very often and you want to take care of everything, I, I would uh, petition Jane, Jameson to maybe look into that and see if maybe this might be a very opportune time to, if everyone supported it, to include that. All right. Thank you, Mr. King. It is apparently this brunch ordinance that the other counties have is geared to the amount of food you sell. I mean, you have to you have to sell food with it. It's not just serving it by itself. Anyone else, else to speak in favor of the new alcohol ordinance updates? Seeing none, anyone speak in opposition to the new alcohol ordinance updates? Seeing none, at this time we'll close up to the board for discussion. Any further discussion? Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Move and a second. All in favor? Motion is carried 3 0 with one abstention. Next public hearing will be at the May 6th Board of Commissioners meeting on the alcohol ordinance update. Is there any further planning and zoning updates? Uh, we continue working on the uh, 453 overlay. Uh, we are almost at the point where we're ready to pass out uh, things to the commission as well as the long range planning committee. Uh, we are continue doing a, uh, our intergov update through planning and zoning. So uh, our, our, our permitting applications and variances and zonings uh, hopefully soon will be able to be done online uh, through an online portal. That way, as uh, people do their building and their, uh, their inspections, they can request those online and they can see about uh, in real time that as to when are their inspections, inspectors get on site and uh, if they approve or uh, pass any inspections. Uh, and I believe that's it for now. Thank you, Mr. Jameson. That leaves letter A L adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you.